changes our lives. But let me tell you, when you get a message from God, that's going to it needs to be able to change your life. Isaiah, Elijah here. Elijah here was saying, oh, look at me, look at me, woe is me, woe is me, I'm here, and, and I'm, I'm going to be killed if something doesn't take place. But God gave him the message of hope, and God gave him the message that said, let me, just depend on me, and it'll change your life. We, have you ever, I, I know you have, ever heard somebody say, or maybe say, I'm just trying to find myself. I was, I took the dog out, yes, we, we were, we had the girls on Friday night, and we had the dog on Friday night, got them all day yesterday, of course, all the snow, and the only tracks that were out there was, was the dogs, I started to say my dog's track, but your dog's track, the only, only tracks out there was, was his tracks, so when I took him, take him out, you know what he would do, he'd sniff those tracks, he would follow those tracks, sniffing, I said, dog, that's your tracks, <laughs> And that's all he was thinking. He was finding himself. <laughs> and I got to thinking, wow, well, so many times we want to find ourselves. But let me tell you something. When you trust Jesus, when, you, when he gives you a message, I guarantee you it will be a message that will change your life if you will just that's right. listen. That's right. <coughs> Did you get a message from the Lord? A message of hope? A message that changed your life? Another thing that you get from the Lord this past year did you get the mercy of the Lord this past year? Mm. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, again, 103, he says this, that his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting and more. I'm glad of that, aren't you? I'm so glad that his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting because Micah tells us, he said that, that God's mercy is able to forgive us, a mercy that for. Gives. One of the hardest things in the world for us to do on the human side is to say I forgive. Not only say it, but to actually do it. But you know what? When you get that message from the Lord and you get mercy from the Lord and, you have, and He says to you, I forgive you. It's much easier for us to say, I forgive you. Wow. It's tough, isn't it? It's tough. But when you get that mercy of the Lord, it's mercy that lasts from everlasting to everlasting. You mean to tell me? All the time? No matter what I've done? Yeah. No matter. Doesn't matter. His mercy is everlasting. And he keeps on showing his mercy. It's a mercy that forgives. The Titus writes it. He says it's this that it is a mercy that makes his mercy that makes salvation possible. If God could not forgive you, then you could not get saved. I don't care how good a church member you could become. Don't come big. I don't care how much theology you would know. I don't care. I, you know, I don't care how 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 sweet you are. How good you are. It's God's mercy that makes salvation possible. So did you, did you this past year get the mercy of the Lord? Because Lamentations tells us that his mercy is new every day. Get this. I want to read that. Chapter 3 of Lamentations, verse 22. He said. Oh, let's go to 20, yeah, 22. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. Wow! Great is His faithfulness every morning when we awaken from a new day. The mercy of God is there. <coughs> did you receive that? Did you, did you experience that this year? Did you experience it to a blessing that became where there was no, not even room enough to receive it because, Lord, you've been so merciful to me day in and day out. It's hard to receive it, but, Lord, there's got to be room there because you're sending it. Did you receive a move from the Lord? Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean, preacher? Psalm chapter 68. <laughs> did you receive a move from the Lord? Psalm 68 verse 8 said, The earth shook. The heavens also dropped rain in the presence of God. 
And Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Let me ask you, did you experience a movement of God, a move of the Lord in your life that you couldn't even hardly stand? That you couldn't hardly be in his presence. Remember, in Kings, it talks about the glory of God, that it was so strong. The glory of God was so strong that it filled his house. People couldn't get in. Have you ex did you experience that this year? A move of the Lord on your life. Did you just get beside yourself. What is this? What is this? Wow. I think that we, we find in, in the book of Luke, remember when Jesus was walking on the road to Emmaus with the two disciples there, and they had two men there, and they were talking about the death of Jesus, and, and Jesus kind of walking along with them, you know, and nonchalant and aware. They said, what are you guys talking about? They said, you, you haven't heard. Jesus, Jesus, who they, who they said was going to be king of the Jews, well, they crucified him. They killed him. They put him on the cross. He died. He's dead. Finally, as they got to the house, <laughs> Jesus kind of opened their eyes, you know, and what they said ended up saying, did not our hearts burn within us? <laughs> and did you as past year experience a move of the Lord that caused your heart to burn within you? You see, again, as, I, as you heard me say a lot, it's not about me. It's not about you, but it's all about Him. And did you get a move from the Lord in, in your life, in your heart? I, you know, sometimes we, we say, oh man, there's something going on in my life. A lot of times it's just indigestion. Think about that. <clears throat> but there are times in your life it's not the indigestion that's moving. It's God moving in your life. And bringing you a message that says, here's what I want you to do. You see, a lot of times when we look at that move of the Lord so strong in our heart that, in, in, in our, that it fills our heart and our, it burns within us and God's saying, I'm here to move you. And I know, I know sometimes that people like to sing the song that says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. You don't believe me. You look at your pew. It's formed in your butt talk. <laughs> sometimes you don't want to be moved you're sitting from. Wow. But the thing about it is God is saying, have you, did you experience that move of the Lord said, here's what I have in store for you and here's what I want you to do. You see a lot of times when we get a message from God we like that message of hope and we, we, we like that message that changes our life and we love His mercy and then all of a sudden He's moving us to say I want to move you out of your complacency to work for me. I want to move you out of sinfulness unto salvation. I want to move you by allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. I want to make a move in your life. You know, there may be some of you here this morning that God has even maybe sent you a message this past year through his, and by His wonderful movement. And He may have sent you a message this year. Some of you men might be, you know, God might have been saying, you know what I want you to do? I want you to preach the gospel. I want you to accept that call. And yet a lot of time we turn that message aside. Maybe some of you other folks that, that God is moving you to missionaries or Sunday school teachers or whatever it might be. Uh, you know, in, in, in ministry, God's saying, here's, here's what I want you to do. I'm moving you to do this. But a lot of time we back off and say, oh, wait, are you sure? Did you experience a move of the Lord? Wow. If you didn't experience a move of the Lord last year, something's wrong with you. Think about that. I don't think you might fire me on the last day of the year. <laughs> nah. But not only that, then let me ask you this. <clears throat> Thank you for singing that song, Randy and Amy. Amen. Did you experience or a blessing? You know, Malachi is writing, he says here that, and God is saying this, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Did you experience a miracle from the Lord this year? <laughs> Did you experience a miracle from the Lord this year? Wow. It may be, first of all, it may be a miracle of salvation. Have you ever known someone who is so wicked and so mean in their life and then all of a sudden God speaks to their heart, they get saved and the thought that comes to your mind, wow, I don't believe it. Let me tell you what, there's nothing that God can't do. Amen. 
And they say you can't make a silk purse out of the sow's ear. I've got news for you. You old sow's ears, God made 